Okay, we're going to call to order the prison board meeting December 15th. It's approximately 1235. I need a motion for, for the approval of the reading and the approval of the minutes from last meeting. Motion. Second. The opportunity for the public to address the board on agenda items only. I see no one. Okay. Okay, we're going to go to motion 21 3060. A motion to approve all current payables for the community correction center and the prison. I need someone to make a motion to approve these items. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, now we're going to start with the reports. We'll start with uh, Controller DeBilio. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, prison inmate and canteen account uh, controller's report for December 2021. The controller's office reviewed the prison inmate and canteen account reconciliations which were prepared by the prison business office for the month of November 2021 and found no discrepancies between the reconciliations and the bank statements. The balance in the inmate account was $593,958.41. As of November 30th, 2021, the balance in the canteen checking account was $739,000. As of November 30th, and in addition, as of November 30th, the canteen account owned two certificates of deposit, one valued at $15,000 and the other at $132,327.20, which totals $147,327.20. And that concludes my report. Okay, thank you. Anybody have any questions for Control DeBilio? A motion to approve his report? Motion. Second. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. You're welcome. I see Mr. Jeffers is here already. Good morning, sir. How are you today? How are you, sir? Good. Good. Community Corrections Programs Report for November 2020, Item 1, Adult House Arrest had 167 participants, Juvenile House Arrest had 13 participants. Item 2, the program's revenues for the month totaled $52,317.44. Item 3, the ex program's expenses for the month of November were $79,892.70. Item 4, program's completions were 43. Item 5, program's violations were 5. Item six, programs outstanding warrants are three for work release and two for house arrest. And item seven, the budget report for the year so far, overtime is at 9%, expenses are at 82%, and revenue is 112%. That concludes my report for November. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Jeffers? Thank you, Mr. Jeffers. Thank you. Motion to approve uh, the Community Correction Center report. So moved. A second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Have a happy and safe holiday season. You too. Thank you, Mr. Jeffers. <coughs> okay, the next report, Mr. Betty, Warden Betty. Good afternoon, board. Good afternoon. Um, the average daily population for November was 668 inmates, 501 were county inmates. We averaged 599 adult males, four juvenile males, and 65 adult females. The average daily population of U.S. Marshal Service detainees for November was 167. Our overtime, out-of-county boarding, and community service reports are attached. Uh, the staffing update, the uniform staff on shift is 168 full-timers. We have six out on workers' comp, one on continuous FMLA with 65 having intermittent FMLA, one on administrative leave, and four full-time vacancies. That's a total of 180 full-time officers. 
The budget as of November 30th, revenue was at 83% and expenses were at 93%. Extraordinary occurrence reports, there were two during the month. Um, no, November the 4th, the newly committed county inmate was being uncooperative with the booking process. This individual's conduct, conduct continued to escalate to the point where he began to spit at officers and was threatening bodily harm to them. Staff placed him in the ERC, the emergency restraint chair, for the safety of all involved. The very next day on 11-5, a newly committed inmate was observed that attempting to commit suicide by tying clothing around his neck. Staff intervened, removed the clothing from him, and placed the individual in the ERC. Priya, there was one Priya investigation completed the month of November. It was an allegation of inmate on inmate sexual misconduct and it was deemed unfounded. And the investigative report was forwarded to the DA's office for review. Um, this concludes my report. Anybody have any questions for Warden Betty? Just wanted to ask the warden how uh, things are with the COVID current condition. Warden. We're experiencing an uptick at this moment. We have two blocks that are locked down for quarantine purposes. We have a total of 11 inmates who are positive and uh, a handful of staff members who are also positive that are out. So it's, it's a significant increase from last month. Is the vaccine um, level with employees up to snuff, would you say, over there? You know, I, I really can't say because I don't have any information on the boosters. I, myself, I, I got my booster shop in the month of November, but I can't speak for everybody at the, at the facility. If everybody did um, hit the target for getting a booster, we would be over 70%, but I don't know where we're at there. Thank you. The four full-time vacancies, Warden, are, uh, are they, are we currently have any uh, applicants for those positions? We do have some applicants. Again, I'm, I'm thinking uh, right after the, the new year starts that we're gonna start interviewing individuals because I anticipate that there's gonna be at least one more vacancy. And the reason I say that is because we have a sergeant vacancy right now and uh, I'm positive a correctional officer will be promoted into the sergeant ranks, creating another uh, CO vacancy. So we're gonna have at least five in January. Tim, we have a new, you're gonna have a new captain, of, like another security captain position open too, right? Yes. Warden, uh, any movement on a chaplain as far as the you know, I, I know we spoke earlier today. I actually have uh, a news update on that and that I have been contacted by Mr. Baxter from uh, Jubilee Ministries. Um, basically what I was asking was, I was asking if they can provide the type of service that they're providing down at the Luzerne County Correctional Facility. Very happy with that. And I think I mentioned that at the prison board meeting last month. He got back to me saying that um, he had to look into that and thought that they'd be able to do so. And the message I got from him today, it's an email message that I haven't responded to yet, is that they're going to be able to do that, which is great news. Um, so I'll be in touch with him and we can move forward at this point. And, and those services, what I want it, that Luzerne County has is, I wanted them as the, as the chaplain, even though it would potentially be several chaplains, I wanted them to be able to assist with all matters that are um, religious, re religiously based. You know, when we open back up, if we need, if we have a sudden influx of uh, people of the Jewish faith and we need to get a rabbi to be coming in on a regular basis, I don't want to have to be doing that. I would like them to do that. Uh, you know, notifications of death and serious illness for the inmate population. Anybody who's a trained chaplain is much better at that than anybody that works at the jail. They have a lot more empathy. They're, they're trained to have more empathy. And I'd like those kind of services as well as coordinating matters once we do open up the, uh, the prison's uh, chaplain Thank you. or chapel. Any other questions for Warren and Betty? Okay. Motion to accept uh, Warren and Betty's report. Motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Warden, thank you very much. Thank you and have a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you as well.
The opportunity for the public to address the board. Hi, um, Eileen Acapinti, Dunmore. I just want a clarification. The inmate account versus the checking account. Could you just define what's the difference or what that means? Yeah, my, um, my, my, oh. I'm sorry. My, my chief internal auditor is here who could address that more specifically. Okay. Reggie, can you? Uh, Mr. Mariani. Reggie Mariani. inmate account are the funds that each individual inmate have in their own account. The canteen account is the funds that are put into the account from various commissions, et cetera, that are used for the inmate's benefits based on pre-approved expenditures by the prison board. <clears throat> Let me just see. So the inmate account would be but the money that's in there that maybe their family put in there for them right. to buy something. Right. And then the checking account would be what they paid for whatever good Yeah, they're both of them are checking accounts. But. Okay, so the money that would be, um, that you could spend for something to benefit the prisoners would be that checking account. Uh, yes, the okay. canteen account. The inmate account is there. Account. Inmate right. account is there. Right. Okay, That's solely you. there. Yeah. Okay, I just never got the two differences. Thank you for that. Okay. Um, my next question, uh, Billy, I think, Warden Betty, uh, who would be uh, responsible to verify the um, vaccine validation of the inmates and the prisoners? I think. Our, our medical provider would do that. Okay, so there is somebody uh, tracking that to see if the people have gotten their boosters and all that. There's no mandating of employees right now at the prison? No. Okay. And are you, able to, are you allowed to ask them if they've been vaccinated? The, our human resource department does that. They, but they, they're allowed to ask them that, okay. Another question for you, then. Um, the occurrences, Warden Betty, the one you said the man was a suicide attempt, and then he was placed in a restraint chair. Why would he be placed in a restraint chair? Was he? So that he could not harm himself. So they stopped him from wrapping the device around his neck, then he was put into the chair. Um, are there any incentives to get the employees vaccinated? Or that would be, that's not you. Okay. And are the visitors still being restricted in the prison because of the COVID outbreak? Yes. Are there any visiting allowed? Yes. Yeah, regular screen visiting is allowed. Okay, that hasn't been cut back at all. So well, what? It has been, uh, <coughs> visitors have to show their vaccination status. Okay. Um, is there any way that they could ease the cost of the phone calls because of the restriction of visitors? I guess that would be the board. Has anyone suggested that? Because of the inmates obviously need support from their family. If they are somewhat restricted in visiting, could we cut the expense of the phone calls that they're being charged? Okay, I, I, I can answer that. Uh, would that be a contractual issue? I'm not sure. We just entered into a new agreement with GTL. We approved it today at the Board of Commissioners meeting. It does, it, the 21 cents is the, is the same that it was. It's within FCC regulations. But we are, we have already increased the tablets from three inmates to one tablet to two inmates to one tablet. Uh, right after the new year, when the new agreement takes effect, we're going to have a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, we also gave, instead of three uh, free minutes of free messaging, we're giving them 10 minutes of free messaging. Um, and uh, Ward and Betty and I discussed using some of the canteen funds so that uh, the, the prisoner, since it's supposed to be used for the benefit of the prisoners, that the prisoners will be able to, um, we're going to use the canteen, he's going to use the canteen fund to allow prisoners to have more contact with their their loved ones, uh, their family and friends. Um, and also, uh, we, we do have video, video conferencing. We'll start at, at the beginning of the year, um, but there is uh, messaging on the tablets as well. Okay. So the 10 minutes free, what, what's the time frame of that? That's, it, they just get 10 minutes of free messaging. So For if, if, if I'm an in a day, so if, day. if I'm an inmate and you, 
you send me a message, it'll call, messaging is 25 cents, video is 25 cents, calling is 21 cents. If you send me a message, it'll cost you a quarter. But then when I, set, this is what I got from Tom Gibney from GTL last night, when I send back, it's at five cents a minute. So they get 10 free minutes of messaging. But they also, um, like I said, we are going to give them additional time for purposes of, uh, uh, because we're going to have the increased uh, tablets. Right now, we were having issues because some of them were, were doing three to one and then they were breaking, but we're having an, an, uh, GTLs putting an on site um, IT person to prevent that, like to, to help with that. They're also going to um, do, like I said, one to one tablet to, to prisoner ratio. They're also going to leave um, like a set of number, like say 50 tablets in Captain Walsh's office. So as they break or we have an influx of prisoners, we make sure that there's no uh, time loss with the prisoner without a tablet. So really next year, um, <clears throat> each inmate will have a tablet. And I think that'll make it a lot easier for them to communicate back and forth with their, their loved ones. They'll have access to that tablet pretty much. I don't know. Uh, you'd have to ask Ward and Betty how they do it. They sign it out. Or is he here? Where'd he go? Yeah, oh, do they sign it out? Yes, they do. And I have asked them, and I talked to the we have Deputy Warden Purvis and Deputy Warden Orzel. Now that we're at like a two to one ratio, I am asking them to make sure that the lieutenants or the sergeants or whoever it is make sure that one person doesn't hoard the video, hoard the tablet. That the tablets are, you know, until we can get one to one ratio, that they are. Uh, everybody has the opportunity to to utilize them. And this agreement with GTL, GTL provides the tablets. Correct. And then we pay for the service of the usage of that. Right. So for, so for the, they also provide the telephone service. So for the telephone service, we were getting 52% of the revenues, and now we're getting 75%. It's 21 cents a minute. That was the same as it was last year. For the, the messaging and the video, it's 25 cents a minute. Mm -hmm. um, and we are getting 25% of the revenue. And then we will be getting a, a bonus starting in year two of 2%. 4% in year three, 6% in year four, and 8% in year five. So basically the, 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 the costs remain the same, just we're getting, the county is getting a, a, a higher piece of the revenue being generated um, because you know the cost of, of, of inmates, uh, maintaining inmates, as we talked about at the Board of Commissioners meeting, this year it's around $99 uh, per inmate per day. Um, so we have to offset the expenses with, with the revenue. And I know that uh, so, uh, there's been a couple articles written saying that we're making money on the backs of the most vulnerable, and that's, that's not true. Um, you know, we developed a uh, behavioral health program with mental health and substance abuse specialists. We hired a, a new medical department to help with detox and mental health issues and sub substance abuse. We've done a lot for for inmates, I advocate for inmates. I don't do anything on the backs of I, anyone I, that's I, vulnerable. I that. I, I mean, one concern when you went back and you said, you're gonna utilize canteen funding for this too, but then essentially that's an expense for the inmate, inmates family as well, which I brought up a couple of meetings. Ago. I don't I don't know where how the canteen fund is funded. I'm not gonna lie to you, I, I, I don't well, know. I asked that day and they said the only funds that are generated are what's the inmate are charged for whatever product they buy. Right, so certain things, so my understanding is from talking to Ward and Betty, certain items have to go through the board, certain items don't. Like, for example, he bought 60-inch TVs for, for in the, the prison because they had, like, the real little ones in the, mm -hmm. the big rooms. Um, and then Judge Gibbons is the one who actually suggested that we use some of the canteen funds since it's, I don't know, I he just said it, but I forget what the number is right now where we are, but um, with the balances, what is it, over 500? Yeah, it's uh, 739. That we do it. I wanted to do it for purposes of now is, is ideally what I wanted to do it. Um, but we can't get one-on-one -on -one tablets, per, like the ratio, until after the new year. Um, but I'm still going to try to work with GTL since we will have two-to-one to try to get uh, for the holidays, to try to get um, free time for, for everyone to, to visit with their children and their parents exactly. and their... 
Thank you. Their family. And that, I think we have the same concern there. Right. What kind of burden are we putting on them? Whether we're right. charging them for the phone use, whether we're charging them for the candy bar in the, in the canteen. Right. We're still generating a lot of funds from people. That fund is coming into their account through families who don't have the money. But they're also getting an educational package that addresses Absolutely. religion, um, their GED, college courses, money substance well abuse. If indeed it prevents recidivism. That's, right. That's our whole that's point. Good. That's exactly what we're here for. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much for your time. Have a good holiday. You too. Warden. Isn't there a time limitation for an inmate when they're on that tablet? I mean, they just can't take it and have it for a half hour, right? I mean, aren't they? Yes, Pardon me? There is. I'm not sure. Tell me. Do you know what, how much? I think there is not, but we can check one. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I was going to say that. I was going to wait till after the meeting. But if, if you can do whatever you need to do to ensure, I, it, ha, it was a complaint when it was a three to one ratio that people weren't getting access to the tablets. I don't know now that we're up to a two to one, but it may take because of the having to get the charging stations and things of that matter, it may take 60 days for them to put in the one-to-one -one ratio. Um, I told them like a hard deadline was March 1st. So in the meantime, if you can just make sure everyone gets access, if you could set up some system, um, especially since the broken ones that were in Captain Walsh's, uh, I think he had 60, I think have been replaced. And then they're giving about 50 more to bring it up to that two-to-one. And then, Warden, you can do your... your um, canteen fund uh, thing whenever everything's put in place. If that's acceptable to you, of course. Thank you. Good afternoon. Bev, Bev, Bev DeBar, Oster Scranton. Oh, uh, a lot to take in here today, but it uh, looks like the COVID explosion in there is uh, affecting us. A lot about of course I want us to have the religious programming back in like the Bible studies and you know that we had before <coughs> volunteer in the chapel and the book distribution I to the only way this COVID is coming in is unvaccinated people coming in from the outside having being around the prisoners I mean, if everybody was, I'm vaccinated, I could come in, but yet I'll be probably denied to come in because other people who were unvaccinated came in and spread the COVID. I, is there a way we can continue with the, pick up the, the religious programming and uh, the book distribution? Well, before the meeting, we have a little, we had a little conversation, Bev. Uh, we're, we're right now we're at, we're at the mercy of, of, of COVID, and uh, I know they have security measures in place now to do the best we can so that we can meet the inmates' needs. But uh, Warden, do you want to comment about, about that? Sure. Um, hear me. You want to come up, please? I, the one comment, I don't want Bev to take this as a critique of what she said. It's, it's factually not true. Um, it's not the unvaccinated. That's a major driver. The individuals that work for the prison right now that are out, I think every single one of them is vaccinated because the Delta variant and this upcoming Omicron variant are, are eluding the vaccination. You're not getting hospitals sick, hopefully. You're just getting sick, but it is... It is infecting people who are fully vaccinated. It's infecting people who have gotten the booster. They are transmitting it to other individuals. And in our case, with uh, who might be bringing it in, um, Bev could be right. But at the same time, we're getting an average of 10 new commits a day. And even though we're isolating them and testing them before we allow them out of a medical isolation, the reality is some of the individuals coming in might be testing positive at the tail end of that time period. I don't know. Um, you know, I could be bringing it in after stopping at a convenience store and picking up a soda. Maybe, uh, you know, four days later, three days later, 
I'm feeling fine because I'm fully vaccinated and everything, and I don't, I'm asymptomatic, I could be passing it, which is why I'm wearing my mask. So it, we, we just don't know. I mean, I'm not Dr. Fauci. I don't pretend to be one. I didn't sleep in a Hotel 7 or whatever. Um, but the reality is uh, we just don't know where it's really coming from. But these variants are eluding the vaccinations. So, and again, I don't mean to, to be debating Bev on this. I, I don't mean that at all. I'm just saying there are other avenues other than the unvaccinated. I don't want to just point fingers at the unvaccinated. So. And Warner, our goal is to keep books out and increasing content on tablets. Is that? What yeah. Doing? As a matter of fact, I was looking in in 2022 was spending a lot of that seven hundred thirty nine thousand dollars that's in the canteen account. I want to spend a lot of it on purchasing and loading free books onto the tablet system once we get the one to one. I mean, a lot of books. I want to have a lot of books available free to the MA population. And there is there is free content on there now. There's but, free, but yeah, we're and there are free it. books on there. I want to expand that. I want to have thousands of books if we can. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Warden. You're welcome. Well, it would take a long time to read a book if you had 30 minutes a day, not counting your mail or the other things that are on the tablet. They aren't limited in 30 minutes. They, they, they're not limited. That's what we were just talking about. I thought, right now we're going to limit it so that everybody has an opportunity. But once it's one-on-one, -on -one, there won't be really. But that's in the future. These uh, really good books are down there. I just wondered, really, if, if everybody here un visually knows where the chapel is, where the book uh, closet is, it's bigger than a closet, where the classroom B is, where I would like to have the actual classes in there. there there's a big whiteboard. We have, could have shelving with um, trade books on it, as I've said before. Uh, we just have so much potential down there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not being, it, it's not available. Um, Okay, I'll ask a simple question. What if we send a Christmas card in to an inmate? Does that have to be copied onto the tablet? Yes. Opened up, picture and all on the tablet. Yes. They can't receive even a Christmas card in the mail to hold and to have. No. It's, we, it's not that we're trying to punish anyone. It's just that was a huge source of contraband. But even though we purchased that very expensive machine to run the mail through it, <coughs> remember well, about the lawyer mail, that could go through and then it would be declared clean or not. For them to scan every piece of mail using the ion scanner would be inefficient. So right now we have people scanning the, the, the non-attorney mail and uploading it. As of the beginning of the year, GTL is going to be doing that. It, all mail except for legal mail is going to be going to Maryland, getting scanned and uploaded. And then the attorney, but now we're having a problem where people are sending in mail pretending to be attorneys. That's what they use the wand for to scan the attorney mail. I mean, it's just you have to look at, I'd like them to get the card too. I understand that the card is different than seeing it on a tablet, but we have to keep these people safe. And the only, the, the biggest the biggest uh, input or source of contraband is, is mail. Thank you. <clears throat> Anybody else like to address the board? Reverend Doug Postgate, uh, retired clergy. Uh, I would like you to know my anxiety level about a chaplain or chaplaincy being available is much lowered after what the warden shared about Jubilee Ministries. I'd like to ask though, um, when and would the warden be willing to share with the inmates that they will soon have chaplaincy services? Sir, we can do that this afternoon for the tablet. We can send a notice out to all the inmate population more efficiently than me walking around and seeing everyone 
Okay. No, I, I, I appreciate that. Uh, and I think it is timely in terms of the holidays, uh, high holidays, so to speak, to come. Um, the you, other, the, um, please. I forget your, your last name, I'm sorry. Posegate. Hi. Um, the other problem is the, the rooms that are usually used for GED and like AA, or, or, and I'm assuming probably for chaplain as well, they're currently being occupied by the court because they're still holding Zoom uh, proceedings. But I was at a meeting, and Barb Durkin ensured me that at the, as of the beginning of the year, that will no longer be, so then there'll be space available. Right now, there, there's really nowhere for anyone to go in the prison because of we, they have court all day long. Sure, and even with COVID, if, if they were able to be interviewed or shared with across a glass middle, that's fine. It's at least they're no, they know that person's there and available for them. Um, when I would ask um, when and will there be a search for a full-time chaplain in addition to Jubilee because um, our understanding is they would not address the needs of other faiths than Christianity. It wasn't a one-liner. <laughs> um, to, to answer your question, Reverend Postgate, uh, the services I envision is that, yeah, they would be doing, um, I, I'm not even sure what denomination they are. I know they're Christian-based, um, but we would, we would reach out once we open the chapel, uh, yeah, the chapel back up, we would reach out to the providers that were providing services pre-pandemic, like I can, uh, with the Catholic Church, Father Ruth was coming in and doing uh, Spanish and English masses. Uh, we have, I, I won't go through the list of uh, reverends, but we have people, we had an imam, we would reach out to him if he was still willing to provide services once we open back up, great. If not, we would put it on Jubilee Ministries, and I don't mean that in a negative way, to please do a search in the community, as local as you can, but expand out until you find somebody that's willing to come in and provide services for this religion or this sect. Right, right, and 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 we would if we didn't have a, a, a chaplain, like we didn't have a chaplain for ten years, we would do that. Uh, the imam who was coming in, and I'm sorry, his name eludes me right now. I mean, ultimately, he was his name came across somebody's desk. We reached out to him. And he said, "Sure, I'll come in. Yeah, that's no problem." Um, and that's how we did it. But it took a lot of time and effort, and it took time from our staff away from doing correctional matters, and we were then dipping our toes into a field that, you know, uh, we're, we're not experts in. You know, we're not experts in. I did learn a lot in my, I always count my previous life, I was the assistant warden of treatment. I worked with Reverend Jackson. Yeah, he, he worked for me when he was at the prison. Um, but even before Reverend Jackson and after Reverend Jackson, I always had a hand in there. So I got to know a lot of people in the, in the community. Um, not that that served me very well anyway. It doesn't make me an expert on anything other than saying, hey, let's ask so-and-so if they could do this or if they can advise someone that could do this and then we would do our own background check. Um, so, I mean, it's kind of hard to answer that question other than we're, we're gonna do our best. But right now, I, unfortunately, this pandemic is it's getting worse. Um, it's not getting better. I, I know what, uh, Commissioner Dominic said, Barb Durkin said, I'll believe that when I see that, because uh, it's getting worse. And I see, well, I don't want to be a doomsayer. I, th I see things tightening up before they loosen up because the pandemic's getting worse right. at this point in time in the winter. So, so. Just to ask, thank you for that. Um, will, will there be an intention to move ahead through hire a chaplain? Yes, through Ju uh, at this point, I'm thinking Jubilee Ministries would be providing that. Um, that um, Mr. Boris Baxter and I will, will speak. Again, I apologize. I literally got that email right before I came to this meeting, so I didn't have a chance to follow up on that yet. I'm glad that happened. Um, will, there, will they be credentialed individuals? Yes. Yeah. Also under the, the educational um, program, or the educational portion, the, the packet that we got. Core? Uh, with GTL, there's a whole section on religion and all different 
um, do, what is it, uh, dominations, um, and, and numerous videos and things of that nature, Christianity, Judaism. So there's, 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 the, I don't have it with me, unfortunately, but there is like a list of, I think there's like four or five different. And so that's something that can help out at this present time when we don't have weekly services going on. Um, but just so everyone knows, especially the public knows that we're, we're, we're allowing uh, chaplains, pastors, priests, et cetera, to come in and see individuals um, at this point in time. So if your loved one is in, is in prison and you wanna have the, that person's priest come in, just have the priest give us a call, have the priest show up. We'll, we'll, we'll get that individual in front of them. Yeah, there'll be a piece of glass between them. It'll be plexiglass, but it'll be between them, but there'll be a phone on both sides. They can have a face-to-face -face meeting and talk about whatever they like. Jubilee also offers a 50 bed reentry program. It's a transitional house. And they also accept right now tier one sex offenders, which is huge for us. So that's why I'm kind of excited for Jubilee as well. There's 50 beds that we can possibly reentry or get somebody paroled or house arrest to. They let probation in, they let parole in, and they also take in tier one sex offenders, which is huge. So. Thank you. Thank you. I think as a board, we all agree, I, I'm sure we all agree that we wanna see the inmates have their, meet their needs. We wanna see that happen, but we have to do a balancing act with the, with the COVID pandemic. So we wanna do it as safely as possible. So as the warden indicated, we're gonna do the best we can, but we have to keep safety in mind as well. I hope everybody understands that. Does anybody else like to comment, or come up and uh, address the board? Okay, is there any other members other business? Motion to adjourn. Motion. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you.